All right, we're going to start off a bit heavy here. Uh, what you just heard was a, a snippet from Sports Illustrated's piece on Tyler Halinski, who committed suicide, sadly, in, in January, former Washington State quarterback. Sports Illustrated TV has profiled the Tyler Halinski story, and you just heard from the, uh, the parents of Tyler Halinski. That's actually the trailer to uh, the the mini doc, which you can view on Sports Illustrated TV. You got to have a subscription, though, just, just uh, letting our listeners know that. I, I haven't seen the piece. I don't have a, a subscription to Sports Illustrated TV, but I did read the piece, which you can read for free, done by Greg Bishop. We did a fantastic job. There's so much emotion. I will warn you, it's rather graphic because it does go through the details of what occurred in January, the days leading up to Halinski taking his life. And in just a moment, I'm going to unpack that story. But, you know, there's getting uh, this story is getting a lot of reaction nationally. You know, I mentioned on yesterday's Current Sports how the parents of Halinski, they actually were on the Today Show. NBC's Today. Earlier this week. And they detailed what happened to their son. And are now really diving in. Um, in many different endeavors. To try and uh, support funding for, for mental health to raise awareness on CTE. And the story is just alarming on many, many levels. And football can kill. Football can kill. That is a direct quote coming from Nancy Armour of USA Today, a written piece in USA Today entitled CTE's Ugly Truth is that Football kills. It's an in-your-face, honest piece. I, I I have to commend Nancy. It was very, it was well written, and and again, very blunt and very honest. And again, we mentioned this in yesterday's current sports. Um, you know the the, the parents of former Washington State quarterback Tyler Helinski going on national television, and announcing that the brain of Halinski had the early stages of chronic traumatic encephalopathy, otherwise known as CTE. Halinski was just 21 years old when he decided to take his life on January 16th. Halinski now becomes the, the second active college football player to be diagnosed with CTE. Owen Thomas, a defensive end at Penn, who was also 21 years old when he committed suicide in 2010. He also was found to have the early stages of CTE. When you dive into the numbers, Just want to bring up two studies here. One study last year found CTE present in the brains of 99%. 99% of 202 deceased NFL players. So you take that statistic in account. And I also have to say this, granted, you know, these brains are are donated by players or family members who suspected they had the disease before death. But in response to that, I say no one can hear or read that statistic. No one can look at those numbers and tell me that they don't raise some kind of concern. Second study in a Boston University uh, study. That study found, uh, when looking at former football players, 
released last summer. 48 of 53 college players were found to have CTE. Boston University, a Boston University study of former football players released last summer. 48 of 53 college players were were found to have CTE. It's, It's alarming, folks. And the question that I have for our current sports listeners today and again, we briefly touched on this. Again, uh, Ian Hawley, current sports engineer, I, I, I want you to kind of, because, uh, you know, I asked you the question, you know, if, if, you know, we both don't have kids right now in our lives, but, you know, if one day I am blessed to have uh, an Al Martin the third, if he came to me and said, hey, Dad, you know, I, I want to play football. I'm going to be real with you. I would have second thoughts and I would discourage that. Reading this story from Tyler Halinski and reading the stories that, that we've seen in the past few years as it relates, relates to CTE and concussions within the sport of football, I would discourage my son from playing football. That is my honest opinion. And you noted on yesterday's show, Ian, that your parents actually discouraged you growing up. Is that right? Correct. Um, I played hockey. I played lacrosse. Um, two of the more violent sports that are out there. Uh besides football, but I actually asked my parents, you know, multiple years, can, can I play football? Uh, and they said no, just because of the uh, the head injuries that are associated with the game and, you know, the neck injuries as well. Um, I know they've been changing the way that youth coaches have been teaching tackling uh, in recent years in relation to the outcry surrounding concussions in the NFL, uh, but that that's really not enough. You know, you can't take violence out of football unless you start playing flag football. Mm-hmm. Um, so uh, my parents did not allow me to play football when I was a kid. Um, I sustained my concussions elsewhere uh, in lacrosse. Um, but I would probably do the same, you know. I, I would say to my son, look, if you want to play flag football, that's fine. It's non-contact. Uh, it's a great way to be active and healthy, but... Football is just too violent, in my opinion. And there are way too many costs associated with the game of football that you don't find in other non-contact sports like basketball or soccer um, or even in games like lacrosse or hockey. You know, in, in, in hockey, you, you check with your body. You lead with your shoulder um, when you're putting someone into the boards. In lacrosse, again, you're taught to use your arms as your primary force for hitting somebody instead of your head or your body. Um, so there's not that same inherent risk when you go to hit somebody in either of those games. Um, so I, in my opinion, football is just too dangerous for you know one of my one of my own children. Um, and I would definitely, if I allowed them to play at a young age, it would be flag football. And maybe if they showed a lot of promise and desire, then in high school I would consider it. But the game gets even more dangerous the older you get. So. Yeah, it'll be interesting to see where football is even at at that point. I don't plan on having a kid for a long time, but mm-hmm. I would definitely discourage my son from playing. Two things. One, how old were you when you went to your parents and said, I want to play football? Uh, I was probably eight or nine the first okay, time. You were I, young. The first time I asked. Um, right. My dad and I always used to watch Michigan State football games together, and I thought it looked like fun. Um, but he just kind of steered me elsewhere, you know? So it's not like you were in high school. No. He said, hey, Dad. Because that's, that's the thing. I think the conversation changes the older a, a young man gets. If, if you know, if my son is eight or nine and he, he says, hey, hey, Dad, I want to play football. No, I'm not. I, I am. No, that's not that's not happening. If he's in high school, he's 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 not a man yet. But, you know, he's he's approaching that that area in life where he's going to have to start making decisions for himself where, you know, he's going to be off to college, hopefully somewhere, right? And I, I think the conversation would be a bit, I would discourage him, but I don't know if he was, you know, 16, 17 years old on, on the brink of, you know, becoming a legal man here in America. I, I don't know if I could, I would stop him. You know, I would say, hey, man, you're old enough now to make your own decisions. You're you're approaching that that manhood age. Do what you want. But I am highly against it, and he, and these are my reasons why. And we would have a serious conversation. Two, I, I don't want to have this conversation without acknowledging and just completely bashing the sport of football as it relates to brain injuries. Because as you guys have known, 
those longtime listeners of Current Sports, we've had guests like Joanne Gerstner on the show, who, who wrote a whole book about CTE when it comes to youth sports. The numbers are actually higher. The concussion numbers are actually higher in sports like soccer. I think soccer actually leads the pack. And, and, and the reason why is because of the headers. And that's why you see in youth sports across the nation, they are banning heading at a certain age, up until a certain age. So I, I think right now, we can double check on these numbers. Maybe we can get our, our current sports production assistants to kind of bring up some concussion numbers in youth sports. But I believe soccer actually leads the pack when it comes to concussions in youth sports. I think that that football is actually, you know, maybe third or fourth on that list. So I, I do want to let that be known. I do want to say that. But again, as I bring up the, these studies, and and again, it's hard to ignore, <laughs> you know, the study done at Boston University, 48 of 53 college players were found to have CTE. It's hard to ignore the number of 99% of 202 deceased NFL players with CTE being found in their brains after they have passed away. Those numbers are alarming. Tyler Holinsky, uh, and again, I want to get your thoughts on this as parents, parents who are listening to the show right now. I'm sure there are parents listening who who have a a, a, a son, who maybe have a nephew, a, a cousin that, that plays football at the youth level. What conversations have you had with that child, with your son, with, with your, your cousin or nephew, and... How do you feel after after reading reports about CTE and, and, and reading reports on on what concussions and, and head trauma in youth sports, the long term effect that 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 those injuries can have on the brain? Is your are, are your thoughts changing at all? Sure. Not every kid who plays the game of football is going to get CTE. We are, we are still learning more and more about brain injuries in, in sports and the long-term effects these injuries will have. But are you willing to risk? Are you willing to take that risk with your child? Are you willing to let your child play the game knowing that there is a chance that they may become the next Tyler Holinsky or Owen Thomas? And also, one of the stats that really stood out to the parents of Tyler Holinsky, which I, I didn't know, for males aged 15 to 34, suicide was the second leading cause of death. If you know someone who is struggling with thoughts of suicide, again, reach out to the National Suicide Prevention Lifeline, one 800 273 talk 1 800 273 8255